12, US 84, and I 75 Industrial Park. This involves 542 acres. It has county utilities, M1, M2, and PD, uh, and, well, PD amended. Mr. Uh, Mr. Dillard, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is a request by a case that was done in 2010 to amend a portion of the PD approved site plan from 2010. Um, the new portion now is approximately 250 acres and not instead of the original 542 that was approved with the multiple zonings as shown on the zoning map here. Um, the future uh, land use map indicates that this is an industrial and a com uh, community activity center zoning. And the current wetland site looks like this per GIS. Uh, staff reviewed the request to amend and allow solar panels and has come to the conclusion that solar panels are not allowed in a PD zoning district. A PD is intended for projects that include interrelated residential, commercial, and office uses unified by a development plan. A solar panel is inconsistent with this intent. Intensive services zoning, or IS, specifically allows for private facilities for energy generation which may require environmental permits. The current site plan, approved in 2010, is binding on all future use and development. A PD amendment requires a new fully compliant site plan and staff has not been presented with a fully compliant PD site plan. In addition, solar panel rays do not fit within the M1 or M2 zonings as these are intended for warehousing, manufacturing, assembling, storage, and sales activities that are generally high intensity. Staff is supportive of a solar panel array on the property. The question is how to achieve the use consistent with current ULDC standards. If the application was withdrawn and resubmitted to rezone the property to IS, staff would support the requested subject to the conditions that A, the only allowed use be a solar panel array, and B, the existing buffers are maintained. Uh, currently, there are solar sites within the county on EA, RA, R1, M2, IS, and MAZ zone parcels. The GLPC heard the request and interpreted solar panels to be considered an essential public service, and therefore, should be allowed in multiple zoning districts. Based upon their interpretation, they voted to recommend approval by unanimous vote of nine to zero. Okay, any questions for Mr. Diller? Okay, hearing none, we'll move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Jack Langdale, 701 North Patterson. I am here on behalf of the applicant to talk about the request. Uh, originally, we requested the property to be rezoned over 10 years ago now for M1, M2, and the non-residential PD. And since then, we've had several opportunities, but didn't feel like any of them were appropriate. Um, they either were projects that we thought had too much noise or maybe an odor or just things that we didn't think were appropriate so close to the residential neighborhood right beside it. Now, recently this opportunity came before us to put solar panels on the backside of the project and we thought it was perfect. With a solar panel, you know, there's no sound, there's no odor. We have a berm along the property line and you generally can't see it. So we, we thought it'd be perfect. Um, we have requested the PD be modified to allow solar panels and I guess the real question is are solar panels allowed in PD and these other classifications that we have M1 and M2 so the question is is a solar panel an essential public service or should a solar panel be interpreted to be an intensive service now, I certainly understand staff's issue. The, the term solar panel is not used in the ULDC. So we have to decide, does it fit into one of those two categories? The ULDC doesn't give a great description of essential public services, but it does give examples. 
It says a transmission line is an essential public service. Also a lift station. If it's not an essential public service, the, the staff has given its recommendation that it be considered an intensive service. Now, I understand that's probably the more conservative. If it doesn't say solar panel anywhere and you want to give it the most conservative interpretation possible, you might call it an intensive service, IS zoning, because anything can go in IS zoning practically. Um, let me talk a little bit about what the ULDC says about intensive services. Examples of what are allowed include landfills, wastewater treatment facilities, uh, energy generation, which means to me power plants. All of these things are allowed in the intensive services, uh, things that require environmental permits. Um, federal or state permits, they're, they're required to protect the groundwater, the streams, rivers, air quality. I'm going to read a couple things from the ULDC about intensive services. If you're going to apply for an intensive service, you've got to fill out an application and you've got to explain a listing of all the federal, state, local approvals that are required and the immediate anticipated future impacts concerning things like noise, odor, water quality, smoke and particulate matter, vibrations, hazardous materials, radiations, water usage, all of these things that would be required with a power plant or a landfill or, or these things, this is what is required for an intensive service. But the way we look at the definition is a solar panel doesn't do any of those things. A solar panel converts solar energy to electricity. It's not generating electricity. When you think of generating electricity under IS, you're talking about a, a power plant that requires combustion of a large amount of fuel to drive electrical turbines. Um, large amounts of water are typically required. There's lots of discharge, uh, air emissions, but with a solar panel, it's just a, a conduit for, com for converting solar energy to electricity. It's a conduit for getting the electricity to solar panel to, it's a conduit for getting the electricity to Georgia Power, just like a transmission line conducts electricity. So we think a solar panel is a lot more like an essential public service than it is like a power plant. Also, I would like for you all to consider the precedent as to what has been allowed in Lowndes County prior to this zoning. If you look around, there are solar panels all over the county. There are solar projects here. There are solar panels that have been approved in EA, RA, R1. There are solar panels in M2. I don't know how we could approve solar panels in all of those different classifications if you didn't call them an essential public service because essential public services, transmission lines, they're allowed in all of these different zoning classifications. They're allowed in M1, M2. They're allowed in all of them except for MAZ, I think. So if you're considering a solar panel with essential public service, well, that would explain why it's been allowed in EA, RA, R1, and M2 already in Lowndes County. I understand that the ULDC is being revised, and I know one of the topics on the revision is addressing solar panels because, as we've mentioned, they're just not addressed right now. So when it's addressed specifically, I understand a different type of scrutiny, but for now, we just ask that we continue to interpret solar panels the way we have been interpreting them. Let's call it an essential public service and allow us to keep going on what we think is a really great project. The Planning Commission has uh, requested unanimously that a solar panel be interpreted as an essential public service, and we would greatly consider your, we appreciate your consideration of that interpretation to allow us to move forward with this project today. Okay. Answer any Mr. questions. Any questions for Mr. Langdale? Mr. Langdale, do you need, are you looking at just the PD part to put solar panels on, or are we looking at putting solar panels on M1 and M2 as well? They'll be along the northern row in multiple 
uh, zoning classifications. So if, if we approve it as an essential public service, then essential public services are allowed in all of those zoning classifications. So I've, I've got a map here, but it, it's in multiple zoning parcels. The, the PD is where it came up when we were planning. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Lindo. Thank you. We're about, we got about two and a half minutes left. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Gretchen Quarterman. I live at 6565 Quarterman Road in Hayhira. Um, I've come before you a lot of times asking you to please don't do something. Um, but this is the time I'm coming to say, please do something. Um, we have uh, our ULDC is ULDC is old. It needs an update. We all know that solar panels are an awesome thing to have in our community. Please approve it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting. And commissioners, I'll turn it back over to you for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, I would. I move we approve the amended PD section and allow solar panels in M1, M2, and PD. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the amendment to the PD allowing solar panels and then to allow it in M1 and M2. Yes, and I want to uh, add one stipulation that the, the existing buffers are maintained. And that the existing buffers are maintained. Would that you second that? support that with a second? We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries.